What's up guys, Jeff from Sorta Healthier. And today we're talking about, well, you guessed it, bones. We won't be talking about all 206 bones in the human body today because honestly, that would be a huge waste of time. Trainers and massage therapists don't need to be experts on all aspects of anatomy, but we should be proficient in knowing basic bone structure. We'll be focusing on the bones that you should definitely know, and we'll be focusing on that for two very specific reasons. Reason number one, a question regarding these bones could appear on your certification or license exam, and this video should help you prepare for that. Reason number two, if you don't know the location of these particular bones, there's a good chance you'll sound like a total buffoon once you actually start working in the field with paying customers. Since you don't want to fail your exam or sound like a total dum-dum, let's get to learning about bones. Of course, before that, I would greatly appreciate it if you considered liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Both of those things really do help the channel to grow and that allows me to keep making free content for all of you. Thank you so much for that support, everyone. I really do appreciate it. So a few very quick messages here. This video should be useful to anyone who's interested in learning about anatomy, not just personal trainers or massage therapists. If you've already learned basic bone anatomy before, what we go over today should serve as a good review. All of that said, I do want to make it clear that I am intentionally keeping things simple for this video. I will also be making at least one, most likely multiple videos that tackle the muscles in a similar manner to how we're handling bones in this video, so stay tuned for that. I will be using Wikipedia as a resource throughout this video. I'm not saying it's the best resource, it's not, but I can show wiki pages without getting kicked off of YouTube, and that wouldn't be the case with many other sources. So we have five different types of bones. We don't need to memorize what type of bone each one is, but we probably should know that the five types are flat bones, sesamoid bones, short bones, long bones, and irregular bones. Some of the main things bones do are provide support for the body, protect the organs, they help with movement because tendons and muscles attach to bones, they're a storage spot for fats and minerals, and they help with blood cell formation. If you are watching this video in preparation for a personal trainer certification exam or a massage therapy license exam, don't spend too much time reviewing this video. Maybe watch it once or twice leading up to your big test. Having knowledge on basic bone anatomy could be helpful, but the vast majority of your test will be on different material. Anyways, the human skeleton consists of 206 bones. We have 80 bones in our axial skeleton, and we have 126 bones in our appendicular skeleton. So the axial skeleton is the part of the skeleton that consists of the bones of the head, the trunk, and of the vertebrae. And as we can see in this picture right here, it makes up the middle part of the body. So now let's break down some of what's going on in the axial skeleton or the trunk. So again, the axial skeleton consists of 80 bones and 26 of those 80 are located in the spine and when talking about the spine we have the cervical vertebrae there are seven of those we have the thoracic vertebrae there are 12 of those and we have the lumbar vertebrae and there are five of those so those seven cervical vertebrae those are at the top the 12 thoracic vertebrae are in your upper and middle back and then your five lumbar vertebrae are in your low back to remember these three things right here I like to think about breakfast lunch and dinner when we're talking about cervical vertebrae that is breakfast and that's because there are seven bones so think 7 a.m or breakfast time for cervical vertebrae thoracic is lunch you eat lunch at 12 p.m and there are 12 bones in the thoracic spine and of course there are five lumbar vertebrae and you eat dinner at 5 p.m again remember breakfast lunch and dinner now we're moving on to some other important things but they are slightly less important than what i just mentioned your first cervical vertebrae or c1 is called your atlas and and it's called the atlas because atlas in greek mythology supported the entire globe and your atlas supports your entire head your second cervical vertebrae or c2 is called your axis your axis is the pivot point for your head and neck it allows your head to rotate kind of like this what i'm doing right now as far as these other vertebrae are concerned don't worry about them for right now just beneath your more traditional vertebrae is your sacrum and your sacrum is this little doohickey right here and it's kind of tough to see in this picture right here but your sacrum is five vertebrae fused together all of this is good stuff to know but it's probably not worth memorizing unlike the other vertebrae stuff i was talking about before just beneath the sacrum that we were just talking about is the coccyx or tailbone and your tailbone is also made up of a few fused vertebrae so in recap here i think the most important things to know are that you have seven cervical vertebrae you have 12 thoracic vertebrae you have five lumbar vertebrae and know where they kind of fall in the lineup uh, according to your spine so the cervical vertebrae are in your neck the thoracic vertebrae that makes up the 
mid back as you can see in this picture right here and then you have the five lumbar vertebrae and those are in your lower back you should also just have a general idea of where your sacrum is it's right here on your pelvis and then your tailbone is right beneath that next up we have the sternum and that's this flat chest bone right here there's technically three parts to it but don't worry about that for our general purposes next up we have the ribs and we have 12 ribs on each side of our chest, giving us 24 ribs in total. So this rib cage here is color coded and it's based on where your ribs are attached because some of your ribs are attached in different areas, but we really don't need to know that for our purposes. Next up, we have the bones of the skull and face. There are 23 bones in the skull and the head in total has 29 bones. So again, if you're looking to go into personal training or massage therapy, there's really no reason to memorize these skull bones or these facial bones. I would only bother memorizing their locations if you have a test that's specifically coming up on these things. But just for general information's sake, know that you do have a whole bunch of different bones in your skull and your face. Now we're moving back to some bones where you should definitely know their location within the body. And by the way, now we're moving on to the appendicular skeleton, which consists of the limbs and the pelvic girdle. So anyways, your humerus is a long bone in the arm that runs from the shoulder to your elbow. The humerus has two condyles and a condyle is essentially kind of this rounded part at the top and the bottom of a bone. And these rounded parts form articulation points with other bones. Some important muscles attached to the humerus, but that is a topic for another video. Next up, we're going to talk about the pectoral or shoulder girdle and that shoulder girdle consists of two different bones your scapula and your clavicle your scapula or shoulder blade is the wing shaped bone located here on your upper back and then your clavicle is your collarbone located on the top of your shoulder right here and you can see it on this guy right here moving on to the lower part of the arm now the forearm we have the radius and the ulna. Now, if you're in anatomical position, which this guy is right here, palms facing forward, looking straight ahead, your ulna is going to be on the medial part of your forearm, meaning it is closer to the center of your body. Your ulna is also the longer of these two major forearm bones. So the other major forearm bone is the radius, and it is on the lateral side of the forearm. The radius is a little bit shorter than the ulna, but it's actually a slightly thicker bone, and therefore it's actually considered the larger of the two forearm bones. Next up, we have the bones of the hand, and just like with the skull, we don't need to know the locations of all the bones in the hand. I've had to memorize exactly where each one of these different hand bones is a good handful of times. See what I did there? Good handful of times. And the same thing happens every time I memorize these guys. Within a few weeks after memorizing exactly where each one of these hand bones is, I forget pretty much all of that information. And the reason I forget all of that information every time is because you don't use that information on the job. What you should know as a working professional professional in the field is what your carpals are and generally where they are. You should know what your metacarpals are and you should know generally where they're located. And you should know the same thing about the phalanges. You should know what they are and generally where they're located. So yeah, the carpal bones are eight small bones that make up the wrist and they connect the hand to the forearm. The metacarpal bones form this middle part of the hand and actually they're gonna be located kind of just like in the palm of your hand or in this, this webbing part of your hand. Then we have the phalanges of the hand. And if you haven't guessed it already, your phalanges are your fingers. And that's pretty much all we need to know about that. Next up, we're gonna be talking about the bones and the pelvic girdle. So when we're talking about the pelvic girdle, technically we're only talking about three bones. We're talking about the ilium, we're talking about the ischium, and we're talking about the pubis bone. And as you can see in this picture, your ilium is this top protruding part right here, and your ischium and your pubis, well, they're both down here. In looking at this picture in slightly more detail, your iliac crest and your iliac spine, those are actually just bony landmarks on the ilium, so those are not separate bones on their own. Pretty much every bone is gonna have some of these bony landmarks, and they will likely be a little bit more important when we talk about muscles. Reason being, tendons and muscles attach to points like this one. While we're looking at this picture, your acetabulum, by the way, is just a 
base socket that your femur, that biggest leg bone, fits into. Anyways, it's unlikely that you're going to have to memorize any of that information for a test or anything like that but it is good general information that you should have in your head. Moving on to the lower limbs now, basically the legs and the feet. And you should 100% know that the femur is this big old leg bone right here. And the femur is the biggest and strongest bone in the body. Your patella is your kneecap, so it's just right on the front side of your knee. Your tibia is on the medial or inner side of your calf, and it is the second largest and second strongest bone in your body. And also located in the lower leg or the calf part of your leg. On the outside this time, we have the fibula. So the fibula is gonna be right next to the tibia that I just mentioned. And the fibula is a pretty long and skinny bone. And next we move to the bones in the feet. And honestly, the bones in the feet are pretty similar to the bones in the hands. There's really three main things that we should know here. We should know that the tarsals, which are very similar to the carpals that we already talked about in the hands, those are these main bones right here in the kind of base of your foot ankle area. And these guys have names, just like the carpal did in the hands. Unless you're being tested specifically on these different tarsal bones, there's really no reason to memorize exactly where each one of them is, and you also don't need to know very specific information on any one of them. But you should also know that the metatarsal bones are the ones that make up this middle part of the foot right here. And then you should also know that your toes are also phalanges, just like your fingers that we talked about before. Like I said before, I'm keeping everything super simple in this video today. And that's because we only need to know this stuff on a very simple level. We could spend hours talking about bones and the various different reasons why they're important. But that is not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is just to give you very basic knowledge. Or if you're practicing as a personal trainer or massage therapist, you should know at least this much. Like I said, I'll be releasing at least one, but probably more videos that tackle muscle anatomy in a similar way. Those videos will still be as simple as possible, but they should be a bit more in depth than this one since trainers, massage therapists, and other related professionals should know muscles a little bit more in depth than bones. In the meantime, if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure to leave those down below. And that's all that we have for today, everyone. If you haven't done so already, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel because both of those things do help the channel to grow and that does allow me to create more free content for all of you. Thanks for watching, everyone, and until next time, stay sort of healthy.